Hello there, uh, my name is Amanda Robson and I'm here to interview and introduce you all to the wonderful Dave Sivers, whose latest book, Die in the Dark, is coming out on the 2nd of March in paperback and ebook. And Dave's here, we're very lucky to have Dave here today to talk to us about it. So come on, Dave, it's a fantastic title and, and you know I love your work. Um, could you just give us a bit of a taster for your latest book? Yes, OK, Amanda. So um, basically, um, it's, uh, a lot of the action takes place in Aylesbury Town. You know that my books are set in Buckinghamshire's Aylesbury Vale. And um, so a lot of the action takes, takes place in, in Aylesbury Town. And on, on, on a rainy night, late at night in Aylesbury, um, a, a, a couple are, are, are subjected to a, um, a fairly shocking um, homophobic attack in, in, in the middle of the town so after, after dark. <clears throat> which um, leaves one of them, um, you know, particularly badly injured in, in, in hospital. So um, obviously Archer and Baines and, and their team start um, setting out to, um, to, to, to try and um, try and solve this case. And fairly soon afterwards, um, there's, there's, there's another attack on, on another same-sex couple. And um, this leaves um, um, one woman basically left, left, left for dead. Um, still alive, but um, in, in, in a bad way. And the other has, has, has disappeared altogether. So um, they obviously want to find out what's the story behind this. Is there a connection with, with the previous attack? At the same time, um, Dan Baines, who right at the start of the um, Archer and Baines series, um, we, we, we discovered that um, his, his, his wife had been um, 10 years earlier a, a victim of a, of a serial killer and at the same time that his wife had been murdered his young son had disappeared and um, in, in, in this in this story while they're you know, try, trying to solve this case um, he finds that a local journalist is writing a book um, about the serial killings the, the, the killer's never been caught and um, She's brought um, somebody that he knows down from Scotland to, to help her do some, um, to, some background and uh, fact checking on the case. So just as Baines thinks that um, this case that's been haunting him for you know, the best part of 20 years, he's finally come to terms with it and trying to move on. It comes back to haunt him again. And because the, um, the, the couple in, in the second case, the missing woman and the woman in hospital are actually a lot closer to home for the team. Um, it's, it's much more personal. Um, he finds that he's torn between really wanting to put all his attention on the case of, of, of the missing woman and the homophobic attacks and um, the fact that there's this distraction now going on with um, his, his, his old colleague um, digging around in the old case again. So he, he's, he's conflicted and he's it's starting to affect um, you know, starting to affect him in all sorts of ways, basically. Yeah, well, it sounds fascinating. I mean, it's one of the things I love about your work is all the layers of the characters, uh, and they you know, there's a lot of thought provoking uh, themes and ideas in in, the, in the, your work that I've read. And um, so, Ar Archer and Bain, what what's their their personality? What's their interaction like? Would you like to describe that for the readers? Yeah, it's 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 changed. It's changed over over the series of of the books. The Die in the Dark is 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 book six. Um, the first book was the scars beneath the soul, and that, and that's where they first meet. And um, in the first chapter, we, we we discover that Dan Baines has, has been um, basically Dan Baines' his old boss has has has, um, has, has, has died, and um, he has uh, stepped into the um, into the detective inspector role on an acting basis. And he is hoping to get the job substantively. And then detective inspector Lizzie Archer um, suddenly appears, transferred in from, from, from the Met, um, where she's been involved in, in an arrest that, that's gone wrong and left her disfigured, which has shaken her, her confidence put her career on hold and to some extent wrecked her life as well. So she, she decided to make a clean break from the Met and she's gone for this transfer to Aylesbury Vale and taken the very job that Baines thought was going to be his. So they don't get off on the best of footings. She's very, you know, very sensitive still about the, the scarring to her face and about what's, what's happened to her. Um, 
he's got a lot of stuff going on at, at the time, sort of um, to, to, to do with um, his wife's death and, and his son's disappearance. Um, he started to have dreams about the sun. He's even having sort of waking visions of the sun. So basically, they're, they're, they're two worlds and they're two sets of problems collide. And they, they just say they, they, they get off on, on the wrong foot. But over, over the, uh, the years and over, over the series of books, um, that relationship has changed to finding a way of working together, um, finding respect. Um, it's it's matured in, in into you know a good professional working relationship, but also a very strong bond bond of friendship. Um, they've you know at work they've completely got each other's backs when they've got problems in their own lives. They feel that they can talk to each other, and um, you know it's it's just a, a, a very strong sort of working and, and personal relationship between the two characters. Lovely. So um, I enjoyed your um, book, the last one before this, uh, with, with uh, Nathan Quarrell. He, that was a change as well, wasn't it? How, how did you, did you enjoy having a bit of a change or have you been happy to get back to what, you know, what you've been doing for the last six years? Well, well, well the, 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 the answer to those two questions is, is, is both actually. Um, Nathan Quarrell sort of came along, I don't know, as a, as, as a bit of a, almost as a bit of an accident. I was um, I was doing a um, a holiday in in New Zealand, and um, I won't put any spoilers in for the book. But suffice, suffice to say, some, something happened there that just gave me a trigger for an idea for for, for a book for for a story, and it didn't feel to me as if it was quite the right sort of fit for an Archer and Baines novel. Um, it was a little bit darker. I mean, it's not that Archer and Baines are particularly light, but it, it, it was an, another couple of shades shades darker. And um, uh, almost at the same time, um, I've, I've belonged to the same writing group for about 30 years now. I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the longest serving members. I, I just keep going back because I, I, I like it and I like the people. And um, it's, you know, it's, all, it's always an interesting evening. And, th and this particular evening, they had um, an author called Julie Cohen along. And Julie was running a character creating workshop. And um, to make a long story short, the start of the workshop was to give you basically, you had to draw two letters out of a hat and two numbers. And I finished up with the initials NQ for the character and the age 47. So I just, <laughs> the, first, the first thing that popped into my head was Nathan Quarrel. 47 years old. I, he could have been 74 because I had a seven and a four, but I, I didn't want him to be that old. And in fact, when I came to write the book, I, I, I made him 42. And I just had this, this plot idea looking for a different character. And I suddenly had this character looking for a plot and I, I just put them together. Um, it's not very far away from Aylesbury Vale. It's over the border into, into West Hertfordshire. Um, and um, so it's still an area that I know, but I, I, I really enjoyed writing the, the, the first Quora novel, so much so that I, you know, the, the characters I, I definitely want to revisit again. But I think also um, the, the, the previous book in the Archer and Bane series, Too Long Gone, um, had ended with, a, 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 again, no spoilers, but it ended with a, a bit of a bombshell being dropped. Um, so it was quite nice to sort of, take a, a step back, do something different, and then go back into them and, and, and visit the team again, sort of in, you know, a, a year on from, from, from that happening, basically, and take it forward from there. I suppose, so, um, in a sense, book, book five was like, you know, the, the end of season one, if you like. <laughs> You're going to write for Netflix. Yes, as well. So, um, so you write in very different voices in your different characters, and and different. You know, you're very good at, with different sexes, and and I think the male characters that I've when I've read your books are very empathetic to women. I think I think they're very sensitively written, and mm -hmm. I just wondered, do you find it a real challenge writing in all these different voices, or um, or does it just come naturally to you? I think it comes naturally, and um, you know. It, if you ask me sort of how, how I go about doing it, I, I can't give you a straightforward answer. Um, I write, I mean, I, I, write, I write people 
as people. I mean, I, if, if, if you've, you've read a number of the books, I know. Um, you know, so I mean, I have I have male characters, I have female viewpoints, I have black characters and, and, and their viewpoints, Asian characters, um, gay characters, and um, I think that the thing is, you know, we we we're all writers. We all use our sort of um, imagination. We all try and get ourselves in, in into the shoes of, of the characters, but not going over the top and trying to think, oh, if I was a woman, how how would I do this? Or if I was a gay character, how, how would I? do that i think i always like to know even if i don't even if i don't spill too much of it onto the page i always like to have an idea of what the character's backstory is and where they're coming from mm. and maybe what sort of life events have, have influenced them um so maybe that sort of uh, affects the way they behave and put themselves forward on on the page i can remember going to um a, an event in um in Harrogate years ago and there was a whole panel talking about some um, gay characters in crime fiction um, and Val McDonald, who, uh, McDermott who, who is gay so made, made the point you know that she, she doesn't drive her car in a lesbian sort of way or go to the supermarket in a lesbian sort of way she just you know she just goes about her life basically mm. and um, I think that that struck a chord with me as well Pe people are, are people um, and, and, and they, they happen to be different sort, sorts of people. And um, I, I just write, write the character, basically. Mm. And it, 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 it's not challenging, it's, it's kind of nice because I, you know, you, you, you don't feel that all the characters are, are the same. Yeah, no, that's great. That's a lovely explanation. So now the next question is, are any of them based on real people? Not really, I don't think. Um, I think, um, I think subconsciously, probably, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of me in probably you know most of my sort of um, my main characters. Um, they're not all all me as such, but there there must be bits of me in them, I suppose. Um, but um, and there and there must be influences from other people that I've met along the, the way as well but I don't go out of my way to say oh I, I, I need this sort of character I know somebody who would just like that so I'll, I'll just write about him or her and give them a, a, a different name I wouldn't feel comfortable with that no, no. I, in, interestingly enough Amanda I, I, I do quite often get some people I know saying oh I'd, I'd love to be a character in your book and, uh, and a couple of times I, I've, I've run um I've run the, the little sort of competitions as well through my newsletter saying, you know, would you, do you want to be a character in, in the book? And um, so quite, quite a few sort of um, people's names, you know, real people's names have, have appeared in, in, in my books. But um, none of them are, are really based on, on the characters. It, it is, it is ju just the name. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> that's great. So what about research? How much research do you have to do for this? Or, um, I mean, how did you find out so much about all the police side of things? Um, police procedure stuff, to, to be honest, I make an awful lot of it up. Um, I, um, I mean, that, 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 that isn't to say that I, I, I don't occasionally sort of, you know, phone. I mean, there, there's, there's the Police National College, there's, there's lo local police. doesn't mean that I don't speak. To, and I know, you know, sort of former police officers who have now become authors themselves as well. So um, I will from time to time contact, you know, police officers and say, um, you know, what, what would you do about this? How, how would you go about that? But of course, they can be quite guarded about their precise procedures anyway. And you don't want to go into too much detail about the procedure or it becomes actually quite quite boring as well. So the, yeah. the police procedure side, probably not so much research. A lot of the other stuff in, in, in the books, like, um, you know, um, tattoos feature in the, the first oh, yeah. Nathan yeah. Quarrel book, for example, in, mm -hmm. in Ink. Um, Lizzie Archer has, has, has got a scar on her face and there's the, you know, so for her, I, I, I needed to find out about um, plastic surgery. I needed to find out about tattoos for in ink. Very often, when I'm just starting out on a book, there will be some things that are going to be quite important that I want to get, not necessarily accurate in great detail, but I'm going to regurgitate it all onto the page and bore the reader with it. 
because um, you can overdo a good thing, as, as you know. But I, I, do, I do like to try and try and sound authentic. So those things, I will try and find somebody who knows about it and, and, and talk, talk to them. And um, I, I've, I've never yet, um, you know, been sort of, t you know, told to sort of get on my bike and go away and stop bothering people. I've met only with, with, with help from this. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a theme in, um, in Die in the Dark, um, which, um, you know, I, I sort of did a quick poke around on, on the internet because I knew this was important. I needed to know a bit more about it. I did a bit about big a bit of a poke around the, on, on the internet, found the very organisation that dealt with that sort of thing, sent an email off, and um, by the afternoon I was having a, a Zoom conversation with somebody who knew all about it. Um, it's, it just, it's, it's great the way people help. Well, you, you must know this yourself. That Yeah, no, I'm, I've been very grateful to people. Yes, as you know, particularly um, uh, Claire Heron, you know, the... Um, crime scene investigator that you've put my way but anyway uh the pandemic has it affected you how um you, you know you, each arch and bane's books takes place over about a year so this last year and um, they would have been solving crimes during the pandemic are you going to set a book in the pandemic it's the thing a lot of writers have been wondering about really whether it's going to be interesting enough mm. <laughs> It's, it's a very difficult one for, for, for all of us, I, I think. I think certainly last year when, when it, you know, when it was, I mean, it's a nightmare now, but it was a real nightmare last year what with the, you know, the, the, the panic buying and, and, and the fear and all, all, all the rest of it because it, it was so new um, and um, it, it, was, it was such such a horrible thing. And I think, you know, the, the idea of writing a pandemic book um, when the real thing was far worse than you could ever imagine in any fiction, mm -hmm. um, it was it was was a was a big turn off. Um, I don't know, but I I think if 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 I wrote, if I decided I was going to write a book set during the time of the pandemic, and the longer this goes on, um, the more years those of us who write series are going to have to leapfrog to avoid it. Um, I think if, if, if I was to set a book during the, the pandemic, it would have to be just part of the backdrop rather than a central theme. I mean, yeah. there are interesting issues like, you know, during a, a, a serious lockdown, would it be easier to get away with a, a crime because nobody would actually, you know, it would be much harder to see what, what, what was going on because people wouldn't be out on the streets and things, things like that. There's some interesting themes, which again could be maybe sort of, part of it but I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to put the pandemic in central central stage you might have to accept that if you set a book in 2020 you know characters would be wearing masks and things like that mm. yeah it is, it is a difficult one it goes on. we can't keep avoiding it forever I, I, I just yeah I, I wonder I mean there can't be so many burglaries right now because they like to burgle when we're all out and we're all in most of the time so uh, I think that's why I just get so many calls now for, um, you know, fraud, pretending some, trying to get your bank account, all sorts yeah. of people blown up pretending to be all sorts of silly things. And it's as if that we're getting more of that because it's just the old fashioned burglary is a bit more difficult at the moment. But anyway, but that's a bit. You think problem. burglar bills turn into scams now, do you? Yeah, well, they've got <laughs> to might, steal someone. Right. But anyway, so. Uh, what about your own writing? How have you, have you, has it helped you concentrate having all this time at home or have you found it a bit more difficult? It's been, it's been a bit up and down really. I mean, you know, if, 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 if you're a writer, you spend an awful lot of time, so, you know, locked in your lonely writer's garret anyway, so pound your way on, on the keyboard. So from, from, from that point of view, I guess it, it's not been, or shouldn't have been that, that, that different, but you, you can't, you can't stop the, the real world in, in intruding on you entirely. I think when this first, when this first kicked off and, and um, particularly with the panic buying when, you know, nobody, nobody knew if they'd be able to get their food and supplies and things like that. Um, nobody knew how bad it was going to be and whether you or people that you cared about were going to get the disease and whether they were going to get it badly. Um, so, it's easy to sort of think in, in a situation like that, look, I, I'm going to, um, I'm going to have all this time sort of stuck at home in lockdown with nothing better to do than write. Um, but I think 
A, I felt, I sometimes felt quite unsettled and, and couldn't, couldn't really, really focus. Other times, once I started writing, you know, I, I, it, it just flew off, off, off the page. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting that, um, you know, I, I published um, in ink um, in, in May last year and Die in the Dark is coming out in, in March. So two books coming out in, in 10 months is, is, is pretty good, good going for me, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's been those unsettled periods. And there's also been, I don't know about you, but one of the things that sort of keeps me going as a writer is, is, is the writing community. And, um, you know, I, I get invited to book launches. I go to, to book festivals. Um, I do events. I do WI talks. I do talks to, to other groups. Um, I, I do fest. I actually, you know, do do festivals. So there's all sorts of different things I do, interacting with people in the writing world, and particularly interacting with with other writers. And they're sort of my tribe. And um, I really miss that. I mean, Zoom has been a, a great a great sort of substitute to the extent, you know, some of my writer friends, I probably talk to them a lot more in the last year than I normally would because I would normally only talk to them when I see them. And, you know, I've gone out of my way a lot more now to actually make sure that I keep up with, with people that I care about. And that's been really good. But I, I, I have missed sort of being with the tribe and having a glass of wine with them, and maybe a lunch and it's just mm. it just the sort of g g's you up you know you you write if writing is just about sitting there writing it's um it's only yeah no, I, I missed it a lot but uh, yeah I, and and what have you got um how have you found the promotion trying to promote you know you're very good at all this have you I bet you've come up with all sorts of good ideas you can share with other writers <laughs> well I'm you. I'm always uh, <laughs> I'm always trying to look at, at, at new ways of, 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 of doing things. Um, I mean, last last year I, I tried to, because the, the, the books are set quite locally, tried to, I, I tried to, to exploit some um, local markets a little bit more. Um, I started sort of trying to trail the book, not just sort of on social media and, and, and through, through ads and things and press releases and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I put some trailers together um, as well on, on YouTube to try and make the, the promotion a bit more sort of visual, a bit more active. Um, and I quite like that. And one of the things that lockdown has done is not only taught me to use things like Zoom, um, but it's also taught me, you know, sort of how to sort of work with making, you know, little videos and things like that, and editing them. And um, so I edited these little videos last year. I also made some films for, um, I'm, I'm co-founder of the Beacon Lit Book Festival. And we ran a little mini online festival for that. So um, I made, I, I filmed the events basically and posted those on Beacon Lit's YouTube channel. And now I basically have really sort of overhauled my own YouTube channel. I'm trying to make a, a lot more use of that. And that's part of the platform for the run up to the publication of this, this book. So it'd be interesting to see how much difference it makes. Yeah, no, I, I think you've been doing a great job. Um, so anyway, one final question is about your career because you had a stellar career in the civil service and I've always been fascinated whenever you've talked to me about it. And I just wondered how much that's influenced your writing or, or, or how much you found it, you know, helpful. Yeah, I was a, I was a pen pushing civil servant for, for 40 years. And um, I suppose how it sort of has, has helped me in writing detective stories is that um, the unless you actually know much about the police structure or the civil service structure, you, you probably think that, you know, they're, they're like sort of, you know, apples and oranges. But in fact, the, the grading structure in the civil service and, and, and the rank structure in the police force are, are not that dissimilar. Um, and the police work in teams and we worked in teams. So I had the experience of working with teams in those sort of structures. Um, they try and solve crime we our job was a lot of it was about trying to solve problems so I think that has probably helped me when I'm writing sort of these procedural crime solving stuff 
to think, yes, yeah, so, oh, okay, so my, my team are presented with these problems. They've got this evidence. Where are they going to go from there? Who are they going to want to question? What are they going to want, want to do with, with, this, with this evidence? So it probably helps me a little bit to put myself in, in their shoes and think about where, where they're going with, with, with the case. But again, remember, remember what I said earlier, that I don't want to get so bogged down in, in the procedure, that it, it's a, it's a how-to manual of how to do policing. Yes, yes, that wouldn't be great. Well, anyway, I'm really looking forward to reading your next book, Die in the Dark, and I can really recommend it to anybody who's watching. And um, I, th I, think, I think that's it, unless there's anything else you want to say, Dave? No, Amanda, thanks very much for having me. All right, bye for now. Bye. Take care, bye.